the conversation continues jimmy and jk is still here so we continue good city mm. i think this time this this session we should simplify it i think we've covered the law yes now yes. there's one th one one aspect that i think we we need to go back to yes please why is the concealment of the revenue estimates in the appropriations why don't they put in the appropriations bill mm. you know when you ask the question whether or not it's me being asked a question now uh, concerning this appropriation bill the question that comes to mind is is there anywhere else in our documentation of these matters where what we're discussing appears anywhere because clearly it's not in the appropriations bill no it does not so there is nowhere where you find it nowhere the only place now you'll find domestic is in the kenya gazettes statements that are come out every month okay mm -hmm. as actual and uh, uh, estimates of the government and they put there that column of domestic borrowing okay in the kenya gazette in the kenya gazette but you don't see it in any bill that has been passed all right now and any appearance in the kenya gazette does not constitute a bill or an appearance in the bill no it's not an extract from a bill that they're no. publishing no okay now the reason i am saying this is because this concealment is the big one of the biggest problems if not the biggest problem to our debt issue 5.3 trillion shillings has been borrowed from the domestic market over the last 10 years 5.3 trillion trillion and i want you to just in summary this is what we call the unauthorized domestic debt audit estimates repayment of principal and interest i want you to understand the motive take note the motive and this document shows me motive yes <laughs> all right title Unauthorized domestic debt estimates, mm. repayment of principal and interest. Financial year, okay? Domestic debts, actual receipts as per the statement of actual revenue, net exchequer issues, that is mm. one heading, one repayment of domestic debt by tax revenue as per public debt account recurrent. Repayment from our taxes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Payment from? Yes. Amount repaid for the principal amount paid for interest those are right. columns okay eh? it begins in 2014 to 2015 mm -hmm. now just so that we understand domestic debt actual receipts as per the statement of the actual revenue and net exchange exchequer issues that that date 2014 to 2023 the total is 5.838 trillion Correct. Uh, these, mm. these, these, these are many. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Right. Five point. And, yeah, five point eight trillion. If I just go to the end, it's yes. five point <clears throat> eight trillion. Mm -hmm. Right. Then repayment of domestic. Go debt to the total. By yes, by yes. tax revenue as per public debt account recurrent appropriations act, same year period 2014-2023, trillion. Okay. Mm -hmm. The amount repaid for the principal, which has been paid, meaning Deni Melipwa in mm. Swahili, mm. you go down again. This sounds a mind boggling. 2.304 trillion. That's a principal. 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 Of the 5.8. A. Of that principal, this has been paid. Oh, right. Okay. okay. The amount paid for interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. okay punishment for borrowing the money mm. 2.670 trillion are you hearing those figures are you hearing those figures so we've repaid the principal of 2.304 and interest, interest of 2.670 and we've borrowed 5.388 yes so it sounds like what we've borrowed is what we've already paid, paid yeah. we've actually, no. and we still owe more because we haven't repaid we still have like two point something trillion of the principal the that principal. we haven't paid and remembering that interest continues to on this principle which remains yes mm. so hey, so right. tell me something yes when you see the repayments and you see what we took they are not too far apart no the repayment is exactly 4.975 and we took what 5.388 so 
Three eight eight. Yes. So as let, let's round off uh, these yes. figures, okay? Mm -hmm. I think it's important. Let's round it off. Mm -hmm. We borrowed five point four. Mm -hmm. Correct. Trillion. Okay. We've repaid five. Right. That's a good way of putting it. In other words, yes. I think I want you to stop there. Yes. Before you, no, no, don't just keep it. All right. <laughs> In other words, mm. we had the revenue mm. to pay. So why were we borrowing? If we had five trillion, why were we borrowing five point four? Maybe the revenue to pay came later. Yeah. No, no, no. Why? That's what happens with loans. You take oh. a loan. You take no, a no, loan no. in expectation. But you can that see we money are every year on year, mm. similar amounts are being paid. But Jimmy, if I went to my circle, like, forget about a bank. Mm. If I went to my circle today and I borrowed a million shillings mm. and it's a three year loan, mm. in three years, I'll have repaid the one million shillings plus interest. Mm. Now, you cannot come in there at the end of the three years and ask me, so if you had the one million shillings why because you have repaid, why did you borrow it? No, the point being... I didn't have the one million at the beginning. Why didn't we have the one billion? Because it's revenue. No, but this is money going towards what? Development. Which development? It's not assigned to any project. You know, oh. let us, let's, let's say... Okay. Let's this say, is not assigned to any project. If it, even if it's not... Okay, what I'm trying to push back here on is asking why did we borrow if we had the money? We didn't. Who, how do you know? It wasn't there. I'm sorry. And that is what I'm going to correct from you immediately. Did we have a budget surplus that year? <laughs> because that's the only thing that would show we had the money. Yeah, or are you saying you know, that this money that we borrowed couldn't have helped generate the money? Then we now we now had to, to ena that enabled us to repay it. Mm. Because now, I assume that when you borrow, that's part of the reason why you borrow, so that the activities you have within your economy can be enhanced, mm. and that enhancement should bring about more money than you previously had. That's the thinking. Now, we further took an audit of all the tax revenues over the same period of time. Tax revenues. All the tax revenues. Mm -hmm. Right? What KRA collects from us using the Finance Act. And we put it against expenditure. Against recurrent expenditure. Our salaries mm. as a government, what are we paying? Our loan external, what are we paying? Our loan external, mm. what are we paying? Our portion of the development expenditure. Mm -hmm. What are we paying from our taxes? Mm -hmm. All right? Yes. And in summary, <laughs> in other words, I, we remove domestic debt. Mm. Mm. Are we together? Yep. Remove it in totality. Yeah. Mm. And in summary, this CT is the figure. Uh, the table here mm -hmm. below shows table one surplus. Mm. It's table three. Mm. Uh, deficit <laughs> without repayment of the unauthorized domestic debts. So oh. that's scandal. Mm -hmm. The year, same period, 2014 to 2023. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Excess of revenue over recurrent expenditure plus external debts as per the statement of actual revenue and exchequer issues. Total. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three. Point eight three seven trillion development expenditure as per the statement of actual revenue and exchequer issues mm -hmm. total three point four nine nine trillion excess of revenue over the development expenditure as per the statement of actual revenue and exchequer issues three point eight no, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Three, three. this is 338 okay. <coughs> billion. billion. This is what? Excess, Excess. of what? Yes. Revenue. You know, I've been thinking trillions. So now you bring up <laughs> trillion. I'm saying 338 <laughs> trillion. I mean, surely. <laughs> what? No, it's billion. Uh -huh. 338 billion. Now, what does that tell you? That we have excess tax revenue. If you, you remove, do, if you do this math here, if you do the math, and you remove domestic, domestic debt. debt, so essentially we are saying the what we describe here is brought about by what we are calling domestic debt. Yes, it's the biggest culprit. So essentially, when we are paying, we are repaying domestic debt. Yes, and it is not anchored in any of our laws because it has not gone to development, and its sole purpose 
is not understood because we never needed to borrow it. We've had the tax revenue. In fact, we've had excess. Mm -hmm. So why are you charging us more taxation? Why are you raising VAT on fuel? Why are you raising the cost of our living when very clearly we have excess tax revenue if you remove this domestic debt? Which is not anchored in our laws. And look at the surplus, 338 billion. The taxes collected over the last 10 years have a surplus without domestic debt, domestic borrowing. So why were we taking it? You know that we are not short of money. The so why are we taking it, Jimmy? Because it is a well orchestrated scheme. To do what? The benefit is 2.6 trillion in interest. 2.6 trillion shillings in interest. Now, this is how ridiculous this thing is. Jimmy, do I hear you to be saying that when we look at our domestic debt, you are actually pointing us to what constitutes the odious debt? The biggest part of odious debt. I'm coming to the next part with foreign. But this is the biggest part of odious debt. Now, that's one thing I think Kenyans should understand. Mm. When you look at debt, we always think it's something foreign. Nobody quite anchors it to local. Ours is both local and overseas. And I'm glad the Ghanaian MP was very clear about their situation. What gave them the biggest problem was 60% domestic started hanging them. Yes. We had 50% domestic and it's hanging us. And in our laws, it should never have been taken. It is unlawful. It does not go towards any project. Okay? It had no motive mm. to be taken because we had enough taxation. We had no cash flow problems. These are terminologies. These are statements created by players to create a crisis so they can take this money. All right? So they come to our banks. They collect our savings at an interest rate of 10% to the government, right? And our taxes goes to pay them a total of 2.6 over the term, mm -hmm. all right? And we, when we go and borrow, are being charged 20%. We are told we are risky. Yet our money and our taxes are funding some cabral of people here that are looting this country to its, to, to its knees. This is what you call modern day slavery and it's the worst slavery because in the olden day slavery you worked <laughs> you were taken as a human being mm -hmm. somewhere to go and work on somebody's farm here you in your own farm <laughs> okay you in your own farm <laughs> you are told and they take everything from you <laughs> this is what is going on here <laughs> and it is the biggest culprit Right? As to why we are being told our taxes must rise. Why we have the cost of living, high cost of living. Is this slavery? Is this chain? And it is an illegal chain. The minute we break it, the minute we break it, we are free. We are free. How does that happen? Oh, it's very How clear. This is illegal. This it's illegal. <clears throat> you know, if, yes, it is illegal, for now, at the rate that our laws are being changed, you might actually find that given time, a bill will be introduced in Parliament, and for all you know, it may suddenly become legal. Yes, but that will be going forward, Yes, even if that was to happen. But in terms of this baggage which we are carrying, called five now, trillion as of now, it is not legal. It is not legal. But, and that we can write off. And this is because we cannot show where it went? Yes, because according to our laws, it should, according to our laws, it should have pointed to a development project. And it doesn't at all. When the Auditor General audits our accounts, mm. does she find the domestic debt? I think you had a comment recently mm. that her struggle is that the only place she finds debt is in the CFS account like us, the bank account of the government which is in the CBK. Okay. That's where she sees our debt. There is something called a debt register, 
which he says he's been unable to find. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, you know, Treasury must be doing its own bookkeeping, correct? Yeah. So it must have a register. Yeah. One would hope. It's supposed to One would hope. Yes. Yeah. yes. That is supposed to exist. I mean, yeah. like even us in our homes, we know where we are. If yeah. we write it somewhere, you don't yeah. wait for the bank. And, if, and when you pay, you come and tell you. Yeah. We, we, we have it. If you have a director general in, 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 in that institution. Mm. That management office. Yes, exactly. And mm. somebody who manages, then surely they you can't manage something that doesn't exist. Mm. Correct. So the debt exists. And the details of that debt must also exist. Correct. Yes. Correct. Now, so then when the auditor audits our books in all these nine years, if uh, the, what do the Auditor General's reports indicate? Because the Auditor General is also just coming back to uh, look at how our budget was utilized. Mm. The Auditor General basically audits, this is the budget, this is what it was supposed to have done, it has done it, and it or must it has be in not. compliance with the law. It must always be. In so, that is abandoned in the constitution. Does our does our audit do our auditor audited accounts indicate these things? You 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 see, what she's telling you, mm. and she was so clear, was that I can't find something. Isn't that similar to what we are saying here about the estimates of revenue, concealment? And when you're saying you why this concealment? Right, Jimmy, so when you're saying that you can't find something, it's not as though it's missing and it's non -existent. somebody put it under the table somewhere. Uh, uh. Essentially, it was deliberately left out so that you would not find Correct. it. Correct. Right? Because what we are saying is that for control of budget, for example, for treasury, these things are basic. You spend money, there must be a record. Yes. You put it together, it should be there in terms yes. of your analysis. You, it should be there for anybody who comes yes. uh, to want to see it. Yes. So what would be the reason why you would not have a current debt register? What would be the reason why you would not see the list of expenditure for projects on borrowing? Why would you not see that? Because there is an orchestrated fraud. Mm. Very well calculated. Concealed. That has a very high return of trillions of shillings. Mm. That is why. But there's a paper, there's a money trail, mm. right? So, for instance, we recently hosted the a former director general of the public debt management office, Warondoho, and we're asking him, "Do you have visibility of the debt? Mm. You have visibility of the debt from negotiated contracts, receipts into the consolidated fund, or wherever else the money is going, and." the obligations and you're the one then who prepares this ledger that says all right in march we're supposed to pay x amount to so and so x y amount to so and so so because all these things are there jimmy where is the concealment taking place you when know, the domestic you know, borrowing you, you know is, eric when eric. the domestic borrowing is taking place this money goes into an account eric and you said it goes into a consolidated <gasps> fund this thing this thing is so simple mm. our audit which we started as a forensic audit, mm. were based on looking at the CBK account, mm -hmm. which is the consolidated fund, the exchequer account, mm. saying, what is our debt portfolio? So we have a number and we have a division between yeah. domestic and local. Okay. They say, right? Whether it's international so it's or external or there. local. Mm -hmm. They put it there, right? Okay. But they don't break down, right? Then we went to the appropriations development and said, what did we approve? Okay. Okay. So when we did our audit, we found the CBK account was showing 8.4, but Parliament had only approved two. 8.4 trillion. Trillion. Mm -hmm. Parliament over the term had only approved two trillion. Okay. Are we on the same page? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Then we went before the term of 2014-2015, and we saw a carryover of Mwai Kibaki's debt of 2.3 trillion. Trillion. So we said 4.3 trillion seems legitimately. Uh, posted mm -hmm. in the CBK account. Mm. So 4.3 minus 8.4, which is what we were seeing, all right, mm -hmm. means that something like 4.3, 4.6 were taken without approval of parliament. Mm -hmm. All right? That was the first thing. Mm -hmm. And there's no other explanation other than that. Other than that. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that means they didn't go to a project. You'd have seen it there. Mm. Now, we also went to the recurrent. You see this? 
is called recurrent estimates. All right? Yep. And in recurrent, they show you the debt payments. So we summarized the debt payments over the same term, and we found that Kenyans had paid 5.6 trillion towards debt payments. Over this 10-year period? Over this 10-year period. Mm -hmm. But you see, the account in CBK is not showing any credit. It's not reducing. I mean that eight is a constant. It's a constant. It just keeps going up. Now it's even ten. As though we are not making any payments. And, and yet the payments we are paying. that you yes. see should So I understand the, the frustration of the Auditor General. <laughs> mm. And the COB, she was here saying she doesn't she cannot even tell you what is what anymore there, correct? Mm. Those were her words if I had her correctly. Mm. The Auditor General is also saying I don't have a register because I need to know in and out. Right? Where is the measurement, even the adjustment, or for example, every time we lose a shilling, like yesterday we lost a shilling mm. value in our, in our, in, in our exchange, yes. right? That even the COB has calculated as 40 billion shilling increase in our debt. Just because of losing One a shilling. One shilling. Where is that being, where is that recording in the treasury? Mm -hmm. Right? We can all go to the account because it's open. Mm. Even you can surf it today and you'll find it. Right? Mm. Okay? But there is something called a debt register. Somebody bookkeeping. Right? Mm -hmm. They are both telling you they are unable to see it. What are they telling you? What they are confirming to you is what we have been saying. This thing is, 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 not, is not clear. It's not transparent. And when something is not transparent, right? Mm. What is being hidden? I am telling you the biggest thing that is being hidden here are debts that are not being taken for development. And they're in two categories. One is domestic. Um, the other is some foreign debts like Eurobond, like the one you've seen the other day, syndicated loans, and so on. Those have nothing to do with our development program. They are illegal in our laws. They are odious debt, right? And they are the ones that are crippling us. It is called modern-day slavery. They are the ones that are hanging us today. Now, when you come to domestic debt, it is important that those who are partaking in it, mm. whether as individuals, as institutions, as banks, whatever you want to call yourselves, understand that they have thus participated in an illegality according to our laws. Mm. They have aided and abated an illegality. That being the case, mm. They may think they are getting away with it today. But if history is to sh judge, you don't get away from it for very long. Today, Kenyans are feeling the pain of this great illegality and you will not get away from it. I want to give an example because I'm coming to that the next time we come on foreign debt. Mm. Goldman Sachs gave about $6 billion to Malaysia. What was called was one MDB scandal. Mm -hmm. All right? That money, a lot of it went to kickbacks. Half of it went to kickbacks. For whom? For political figures hmm. in the government of Malaysia. discovered the government of Malaysia arrested the former prime minister and is in jail because of that scandal. Mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs had to settle a payback of $3.6 billion back to the government of Malaysia, to the people of Malaysia. Mm. But I'll tell you what else they had to do. They had to admit that they had bribed and they had to pay huge fines. Mm. And they had to smoke out the individuals of those institutions, their institutions, that had committed those crimes. Mm -hmm. In Kenya here, we have domestic debt perpetuating a crime. Perpetuated here by individuals, mm. by brokers, by banks, who are not reading our laws. They are not doing their due diligence. And they are causing us pain. And I want to assure them, mm. the day shall come when they shall answer for this. Even as we look at what clearly points to 
an abrogation of our laws mm. in a manner that is not only unprecedented but is actually even beyond imagination because when you think about it just conceptualizing and internalizing it is difficult that mm. such a thing could actually happen if indeed it is a reality but my question was this huh? if we were to extend the realms of possibility that's where the question comes in mm. is it possible that there's another explanation for this beyond what we are saying that's part one Yes. There's a part two to my question. Yes. Now, the part two to my question is this. We know what happened in Mozambique. We know mm. what happened in Malaysia. Mm. Mm. Okay? Mm. We have countries like South Korea where much lesser issues than this one have landed former presidents in prison. Correct. Mm. Okay? Now, with our laws as they currently stand, mm. if no action is taken... Mm. on this matter will there be some other constitutional matter that will be abrogating because indeed if this is a wrong that can be proved that it has been perpetrated and nothing is done mm. so we're talking about those who did it and being those being held accountable mm -hmm. if this is proven to be so and nothing is done mm. the people who ought to and don't mm. What action can we take against such individuals? Very good. City, let's let's agree that first we are dealing with the law. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no other explanation outside of the law. Mm -hmm. The only other explanation outside of the law is criminality. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's not look for any other explanation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. The COB was here and she said, yes, the law is clear. You only borrow for development. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. So anything in other than that is outside of the law. Mm -hmm. It's an illegality. Now, criminal action is what you're talking about. I can assure you, <laughs> there's two aspects here. You've seen my good friend and very able senator who has stood up beyond, beyond reproach, Okiom Tata. Okiom Tata. He has gone and said the law on the Finance Act has not been followed. The constitution has not been followed. Mm. And the courts Seems have said suspend him. it mm. until, we, until, until we have established whether it is following the constitution or not. Mm. Mm. That is a milestone for this republic. All right? And even there, you've seen Epra ignore. <laughs> contemptuous of the law. Mm -hmm. All right? They've gone ahead and done this their thing. is the same thing that's going to happen to this debt we are talking about here. There will be people that will go to court on ODS debt, mm -hmm. on all this illegal illegal debt, and they will clearly do what the people in Mozambique did, the people in Malaysia did, the people in Spain have done, the people in Greece have done. Come out and show the illegality. Of what has been taken because these are actually schemes money making schemes it's a new corruption frontier mm. right this debt issue is a new corruption frontier that has created the slavery i was talking about mm -hmm. now why it's going to be so mind-boggling is that you know i like to repeat some things remember when i first came here i said it is 70 percent of our revenue that is going to mm. And even when COB came, she, she said that it, I think there were some figures there. She said debt payments were about 1.2. The revenue came to 1.8. So it's talking about maybe 63% or so by the calculations I got from her mm -hmm. of our revenue going to debt. But, you know, when you're talking about debt, it may not be immediately complete by the June 30th because, yeah. because it's out of CFS. Yes. So some, some may have been going in this week the, of the previous year's payments. So I want to take the target. She said we collected 1.8. What they said were debt payments were about 1.3, 1.36, 1.4, round it off. That means over 70% of our revenue is going towards debt payments. Mm -hmm. And we are also saying that half of those payments, if not more than half, by the way, because I think the domestic payments are more than half, are illegal payments. And that is why Mamamboga is facing the high cost of living. Mm. To pay those interest to these banks that they see here every day. 
It is illegal payments. And because of this pain, we are going to put a full stop to it. The next will come criminality. After civil mm. or during, will come criminality. Who would be responsible to begin this interrogation <clears throat> of this? Because we know that there are certain officers. Control of budget, supposed to do what she does. Auditor General, supposed to raise, you know, a query if she's seen something that has gone off mark, off the books, right? Mm -hmm. Who then would be the next? So Auditor General would raise this because essentially these things that we are saying here should be raised by the office of the Auditor General and say, wait a minute, something here is not quite the way it ought to be mm -hmm. and you know what the law says this is what i have seen do. my job is to raise the red flag yeah. right True. who takes the next step when we see that something is wrong money approved for spending for which it was not appropriated money um gone for anything outside of development that came from loans or borrowing who then takes the next step the greatest thing about saying. our new constitution mm is that um, they introduced something that never used to be there. It's called warrants. Mm -hmm. Debt register, somebody bookkeeping. Right? Mm -hmm. They are both telling you they are unable to see it. What are they telling you? What they're confirming to you is what we've been saying. This thing is, 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 not, is not clear, it's not transparent. And when something is not transparent, right, mm -hmm. what is being hidden? I am telling you the biggest thing that's being hidden here are debts that are not being taken for development. And they're in two categories. One is domestic. Um, the other is some foreign debts like Eurobond, like the one you've seen the other day, syndicated loans, and so on. Those have nothing to do with our development program. They are illegal in our laws. They are odious debt, right? And they are the ones that are crippling us. It is called modern-day slavery. They are the ones that are hanging us today. Now, when you come to domestic debt, it is important that those who are partaking in it, mm. whether as individuals, as institutions, as banks, whatever you want to call yourselves, understand that they have thus participated in an illegality according to our laws. Mm. They have aided and abated an illegality. That being the case, mm. they may think they are getting away with it today. But if history is to sh judge, you don't get away from it for very long. Today, Kenyans are feeling the pain of this great illegality, and you will not get away from it. I want to give an example, because I'm coming to that the next time we come on foreign debt. Mm. Goldman Sachs gave about $6 billion to Malaysia. What was called was 1MDB scandal. Mm -hmm. All right? That money, a lot of it went to kickbacks. Half of it went to kickbacks. For whom? For political figures hmm. in the government of Malaysia. discovered the government of Malaysia arrested the former prime minister and is in jail because of that scandal. Mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs had to settle a payback of $3.6 billion back to the government of Malaysia, to the people of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what else they had to do. They had to admit that they had bribed and they had to pay huge fines. Mm. And they had to smoke out the individuals of those institutions, their institutions, that had committed those crimes. Mm -hmm. In Kenya here, we have domestic debt perpetuating a crime, perpetuated here by individuals, mm. by brokers, by banks, who are not reading our laws. They are not doing their due diligence. And they are causing us pain and I want to assure them the day shall come when they shall answer for this. Even as we look at what clearly points to an abrogation of our laws, mm. 
in a manner that is not only unprecedented, but is actually even beyond imagination. Because when you think about it, just conceptualizing and internalizing it is difficult. That mm. such a thing could actually happen if indeed it is a reality. But my question was this. Huh? If we were to extend the realms of possibility, that's where the question comes in. Mm. Is it possible that there's another explanation for this beyond what we are saying? That's part one. Yes. There's a part two to my question. Yes. Now, the part two to my question is this. We know what happened in Mozambique. We know what happened in Malaysia. Mm. Mm. Okay? Mm. We have countries like South Korea where much lesser issues than this one have landed from our presidents in prison. Correct. Mm. Okay? Now, with our laws as they currently stand, mm. if no action is taken mm. on this matter, will there be some other constitutional matter that we'll be abrogating? Because, indeed, if this is a wrong that can be proved that it has been perpetrated and nothing is done. Mm. See, we're talking about those who did it and being, those being held accountable. Mm -hmm. If this is proven to be so and nothing is done, mm. the people who ought to and don't, mm. what action can we take against such individuals? Very good. City. Let's, let's agree that first we are dealing with the law. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no other explanation outside of the law. Mm -hmm. The only other explanation outside of the law is criminality. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's not look for any other explanation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. The COB was here and she said, yes, the law is clear. You only borrow for development. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. So anything in other than that is outside of the law. Mm -hmm. It's an illegality. Now, criminal action is what you're talking about. I can assure you, <laughs> there's two aspects here. You've seen my good friend and very able senator who has stood up beyond, beyond reproach, Okiom Tata. Okiom Tata. He has gone and said the law on the Finance Act has not been followed. The Constitution has not been followed. Mm. And the courts Simple have said regime. suspend it. Mm. Until we until until we have established whether it is following the constitution or not, mm. that is a milestone for this republic. All right, and even there, you've seen Epra ignore contemptuous of the law. Mm -hmm. All right, They've gone ahead and done this thing. is the same thing that's going to happen to this debt we are talking about here. There will be people that will go to court on ODS debt, mm -hmm. on all this illegal, illegal debt, and they will clearly do what the people in Mozambique did, the people in Malaysia did, the people in Spain have done, the people in Greece have done. Come out and show the legality of what has been taken. Because these are actually schemes, money-making schemes. It's a new corruption frontier. Mm. Right? This debt issue is a new corruption frontier that has created the slavery I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, why it's going to be so mind-boggling is that, you know, I like to repeat some things. Remember when I first came here, I said it is 70% of our revenue that is going to. Mm -hmm. And even when COB came, she, she said that it, I think there were some figures there, she said debt payments were about one2 the revenue came to 1.8, so it's talking about maybe 63% or so by the calculations I got from her mm -hmm. of our revenue going to debt. But, you know, when you're talking about debt, it may not be immediately complete by the June 30th because, yeah. because it's out of CFS. Yes. So some, some may have been going in this week the, of the previous year's payments. So I want to take the target. She said we collected 1.8. What they said were debt payments were about 1.3, 1.36, 1.4, round it off. That means over 70% of our revenue is going towards debt payments. Mm -hmm. And we are also saying that half of those payments, if not more than half, by the way, because I think the domestic payments are more than half, are illegal payments. And that is why Mamamboga is facing the high cost of living. Mm -hmm. To pay those interest to these banks that they see here every day. It is illegal payments. 
And because of this pain, we are going to put a full stop to it. The next will come criminality. After civil mm. or during, will come criminality. Who would be responsible to begin this interrogation <clears throat> of this? Because we know that there are certain officers, control of budget, supposed to do what she does. Auditor General, supposed to raise, you know, a query if she's seen something that has gone off mark, off the books, right? Mm -hmm. Who then would be the next? So Auditor General would raise this because essentially these things that we are saying here should be raised by the office of the Auditor General and say, wait a minute, something here is not quite the way it ought to be. Mm -hmm. And you know what the law says? This is what I have seen. Do. My job is to raise the red flag, yeah, right? True. Who takes the next step when we see that something is wrong? Money approved for spending for which it was not appropriated. Money um, gone for anything outside of development that came from loans or borrowing. Who then takes the next step? The greatest What's thing about saying? our new constitution mm is that um, they introduce something that never used to be there it's called warrants mm -hmm. warrants mm -hmm. after the appropriation bill is signed the constitution institutes something called warrants the presidential warrants that kick off expenditure and revenue collection measures mm -hmm. that was never there in the previous constitution so to start any movement of money the president signs mm -hmm. so over the last 10 years Uhuru Mwegai Kenyatta has been responsible with those warrants for anything that his officers do mm -hmm. with this new budget the current president sign, has signed warrants he is now responsible mm -hmm. so if there's an illegality the president is the one who is first liable because mm -hmm. he is the one that signs so the onus is on him to make sure what he's signing is legal so when you sign an appropriation bill that is illegal that is unconstitutional mm. because it has no revenue estimates you have taken that responsibility to answer mm. when the time comes for you to answer you can then blame your officers, you can blame the advice of the Attorney General, you can blame the Auditor General all you want. But our Constitution gives you the ultimate responsibility. The ultimate responsibility. How about Parliament? Because those things that are transmitted to the President come from Parliament. That means Parliament has passed a part of budget but not another part of budget as part of the responsibility. I don't want to preempt um, the case uh, before the courts on the Financial Act, on the Finance Act. Mm. But I think you're going to see some very interesting revelations of items that were not passed by Parliament that ended up in that act. Okay? Huh? Yes. And I don't want to preempt it. So okay. let me not talk too much about it. Mm. Has it happened in previous so, acts? So, so yes. Okay. I want to. I want to. I want to. A previous. I want to. I want to. I want to, just show something because now we are talking about motives. Mm. What are, What are these things? What, what is this that is creating this money uh, demand and uh, where, how is it being channeled? What is it going for? Mm. City, I'm very glad you went through the expenditure development. I want you to just see an item here that is on the national treasury vote on recurrent uh, on, on projected uh, recurrent expenditure and there are two years 2021 2022 and this year 2023 2024 so there's an the, item there this is the treasury's budget this is the tre part of the treasury's budget not an the item. national budget no mm -hmm. okay. for the ministry, a, for of, the ministry finance of finance and planning right okay there's this an item here recurrent. money given money given to them money given to them recurrent recurrent okay. this is for, okay, for expenditure for... No, no, yeah yeah it's among those items and i want i want to identify this particular item okay right mm -hmm. yeah. now what, this particular what, item as mm -hmm. you see has got what you call a vote edit you know this is how these things are passed so mm -hmm. parliament passed this mm -hmm. okay. right in two elections in two budget cycles okay so this item i want you to read is, is there 
I've highlighted and marked. If you see the marking. This right? one at the so top just, just explain the chart that you can see. What I can see, uh, we're talking about this, huh? Yes. Okay. Strategic interventions. This is strategic interventions, interventions. in the ministry, in the oh. national treasury. This national mm -hmm. treasury. And it is given a vote head. 107-100-11. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Triple one, triple zero. No, it's, it's one zero seven, one triple zero, triple one. Mm -hmm. Okay, strategic interventions. Mm -hmm. Then there's basic wages, temporary employees. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. this is given a vote head two one one zero two zero zero. Then other operating expenses uh, two two one one three zero zero. Okay, so go back to employees. Yes. What are the amounts? The amounts are one hundred. Temporary employees. Yes, these are approved estimates. Approved estimates are 143 million. No, no, no. Just temporary go across employees. the line. Temporary line across here. Estimates. The okay. estimates are 6 billion. Right. 6.810 billion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Projected? Temporary employees. That's what? Casuals? Consultants? Yeah. What are those? No, I, that's the big question. Treasury is employing temporary employees. Casuals, in other words. I want you to which, understand which year this, is this Which year is this? 2021, 2022 budget. So this is not the year no, of... No, no. Uh, the year of... This is not the year of uh, the census. No, of no, 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 no. No. That's going this is the last budget. 2021, 2022. Uh, Projected estimates, again... No. Of when what? We go to the I think read the heading properly. Projected estimates... Estimates for 2022-2023. Uh, you want the, the big headline? Okay. Mm -hmm. you, top of the page. Recurrent expenditure summary. Okay. 2021-2022 year and projected expenditure summary for 2022-2023 so to 2023 to 2024. Okay. Correct. Yes. Now go to base. This is this is for an item called strategic interventions. Yes. Okay. So basic salaries, temporary employees, mm -hmm. basic wages, temporary employees was how much? Estimates. This was an uh, estimate for, for this year. For the year 2021 2022, mm. it was 6.8 billion. 2022 mm -hmm. 2023, it was 31 billion. 2023 mm -hmm. 2024, it was 57 billion. The same number of temporary. These temporary employees were taking yes, money projected. No, yes, these are projected. Yes, they're strategic interventions. No, which ones are these? Strategic in interventions. What, what is that? See, see now you're, you're going to tell us. But they are strategic interventions and they're, and they're doubling, temporary. tripling, and <coughs> going up by five this next year, and another maybe four and that times. And that passed parliament. Yes. Right. Okay. They're approved. Mm. They're approved. Yes. Now go to the second column, uh, the second item operating expenses for the same strategic intervention. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. The Vilunga the year mm. estimates, again approved, mm. 10 billion, 10.7 billion. That's for the year 2021, 2022. For strategic Financial interventions. Year. For the same yes. thing. These Op are other operating expenses. Other. See, the other one was salaries. Other. You okay. know, this one was temporary. So you hire now, them. Now, now you bust them to work and you bust them home and, and you give them, them air time yes. and you do those kinds of And when you employ them, expenses arise and they're mm. called other expenses. Mm -hmm. Okay? Other operating expenses. And that's extra. Operating expenses. Right. All right. 2021, 2022 financial year, 10.7 billion mm -hmm. 2022 2023 estimates 10.6 billion estimates 2023 2024 10.1 billion so the operations right. remain, the operations remain. The they're more or less in the it's in a 10 well, billion range yeah people. yeah yeah G give or take a, uh you know you see if you take from a 24 seat about 100 million or so so what is the gross expenditure what is the total expenditure for, for these strategic, strategic interventions. interventions salaries and operating expenses it's almost 100 billion. Uh -huh, she uh -huh. It's below. For the one, the first one is 16B. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a little more than that. Gross, ex gross expenditure mm. for, you're asking for which one? The first year, 2021, 2022. Well, 2020, 2020, 2021 is just 10 billion. Mm -hmm. 2021, 2022, 17 billion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2022, 2023 is 41 billion. Of course. 2023, 24 is 67 billion. Of course. Very good. Yes. Now, that was passed in the last budget. Yes. Ah, yeah. This is this year's budget. The same item. All right. This same one appropriation. Now. This one. This one that this began one. 12 days ago. Yes, yes the same. Oh. same. Okay. It's same recurrent expenditure summary for those years. But this is for this year, 2023-2024. Mm -hmm. But then, 
and also the projected expenditure for the field 2024 yes. 25 2025 20, 26 okay okay mm. they've seen ahead again uh, <laughs> yeah, for the current so, so, so <laughs> strategic Inve interventions uh, interventions uh, again temporary wages temporary employees and other operating costs how mm -hmm. much all right, let me just, shall I just give you the totals, please? Yes. No, no. Let's yes. No. Start with, I want to hear the salaries because we have the estimates. Of All right. 2023, 2024 estimates approved 21 billion. Four? Point six. That's temporary employees. Salaries and wages. Yes. Basic, no, please get ba this thing. Basic. Basic wages. Please basic understand. Wages. Basic. Okay. Okay. Right. The 2024-25 year, it's moved from 21 to 39 billion, 39.7. Right. Then 2025 to 2026, just the year before the elections, it goes to 62.8 billion. Approved. Yes. yes. Strategic interventions. All right. Yes. Okay. Other operating expenses. Since you wanted the details, I'm going to continue giving them to you. We are we moved from that 10 billion range. Mm -hmm. The 2023 2024 estimates was 10, then we moved to 2024 25. We are now at 16.7 billion. It shoots mm -hmm. up. Yeah, oh, yes, it shoots up. Right. Mm -hmm. Five and six. We have a population that keeps increasing. Mm -hmm. The year 2025 26, 17.7 .7 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, can I now please give you the total? Yes, please. Right. Please. Fine. Please, CT. 2023 24 year total is 32.7 three billion should have been 67 no, no we're, we're, we're getting Wait. there we're getting there 2024 25 there. the total is 56.45 billion 2025 2026 is 80.57 billion come on remember it's for strategic interventions huh. basic wages temporary, temporary employees what is that Media. Please tell us what that is. I can tell you. Uh. This amount mm. can employ everybody who's unemployed in Kenya. Correct. These are temporary staff. Yes. Yeah, temporary staff. Anyone who doesn't who doesn't have a job. You're talking come about a budget you. approved for 80 billion. Okay. For temporary employees and their expenses. Jimmy, yes. I'm sure I'm sure you've talked to people who in work. the national treasury. Yes. I'm sure you've talked to people who work in the national treasury mm. and who've worked maybe in the national treasury before. Mm. And you must have asked this question. Mm. You can't have come here just blindly. What have you been told? What does it mean? What are strategic interventions? It's a non-existent uh, uh, department in the Treasury. Does Treasury... You no know, strategic, first and foremost, mm. is not short-term, it's long-term. And where is it nestled? <laughs> and where is it nestled? Who are the employees? Who is in charge? Yes. Who is in charge of the... Who is the AIE holder? Who, 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 who passes this money? Is there a department head? Where do you find it? No. You know, in Treasury, there is a planning department. Yes. And planning department does all their strategic planning. Yes. And interventions. Mm. Right? And they have a separate budget to this. This is an amorphous figure <laughs> with a title that's been created for the siphoning of funds. In the last years, has Treasury been hiring temporary staff? To that tune? I'm Not sure would have, seen the, would have seen the queues. Mm -hmm. We would have tune. seen the queues. We would have Somebody seen the applications. Would have told you I did some would, work. Yeah, yeah. No, even you would have seen the applications. This is a lot of people to be employed. Indeed. You would have seen, you know, they have okay. to advertise. Let me just ask. Uh, when, you, people are when people are engaged as consultants, we can assume they're temporary, can we? Yeah. Yes. Mm. So, does Treasury hire consultants? They do, I'm sure. Strategic consultants. I wouldn't know whether it's strategic or not, mm. but every once in a while you do need expertise that is beyond your capabilities. For which department? I wouldn't know again, but <laughs> I am saying... Again. You see, each no, department... I, I each dep you see, I think the reason you why see, I'm saying I wouldn't know, because government ministries mm. do engage consultants. Yes, mm. but there is a vote for them. There is a budget for them. There's a line item What's it of called? what they are doing. For example, mm. if, if you miss in the treasury, yeah. needed to employ more consultants mm. they would have put a line item we need experts for this and this and for that this project right whatever. and it yeah. is in that expenditure uh, uh, the development expenditure estimates it's there this one is an amorphous target called strategic interventions and this is where you'll find domestic debt mm. and its so-called uptick moves they, out to they go into those, those sort things. of things
and that you what, cannot find. And what you're saying Our is time that, is up. It's, a, it's up, huh? Imagine. All right. We have said it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we we're working on getting the Auditor General to come and join us. And it will also be good even to have the previous Auditor General. In fact, people It will even be better if we Edward Oko has been here before. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Governor of the Central Bank. And the Governor of the Central Bank. I have written to him. And, uh -huh. and uh, asked him. And the cabinet secretary. I hope of the they National can come. Treasury. I'm waiting for a response. And the current director general of the debt management office, Edward Sambeli. Mm. All of these people, let's have conversations. Wonderful. Jimmy, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for raising these issues, these questions. Then we can all interrogate the questions. Mm. Asante yeah. Sana. Asante. Good to be here. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.